What's up guys, Spencer here. Today we're going to go over ridge regression theory and how we can apply that and what we can do with it and how ridge regression differs from that of linear regression. So let's get right down to it. Ridge regression, or known as the L2 norm, is essentially a linear regression model with an added constraint. It's also known for the penalization of certain coefficients, either going, going straight to zero or close to zero. Uh, we would essentially use ridge regression in order to find certain results similarly to that of the linear regression. It models a linear relationship, but when we are dealt with so many variables and so few rows, this type of regularization would be best uh, to actually use in those specific circumstances. So why would we even use ridge regression over linear regression? So as I was mentioning earlier, if we have like thousands of features or thousands of columns and only a few rows, like in a magnitude of like let's say 100 rows and like 10,000 columns, we need a form of regularization to identify which features are most important to us. So ridge regression is essentially the linear regression with added constraint to the coefficient, meaning that it will either add a coefficient value that is relatively close to zero or even zero to cancel out that specific, uh, that specific coefficient altogether or that column. As a result, the seemingly meaningless values will approach zero and we will have less variables to work with. When our coefficients are actually zero, we still maintain the overall structure of all of our features. We just reduce the overall complexity by having a coefficient of zero or something that's relatively very close to zero with that coefficient and essentially canceling out, meaning that that specific feature is irrelevant. Now there's a few definitions I want to go over. One, the bias, and two, the variance. These are very important to understand with the overall shrinkage or regularization techniques that we'll be using throughout this entire series. The first being bias. It's essentially the expected value that differs from the underlying quantitative parameter that's estimated. And it essentially measures the accuracy of the estimates. So in this given equation, the bias of the beta hat or nearly least squares is equal to the expected value of the estimated beta values subtract the true value. Similarly, we need to know what variance is. It's essentially the bias, not the bias. It's essentially the spread of the estimates from the true value. And the equation is given over here. This is a great visualization on what the relationship between variance and bias is, and it can single out what these variables represent. So top left-hand corner, we have the low variance and low bias, meaning that, well, given that our target is the red bullseye, low variance means that it's very close to our actual true value, the red target, and we have a low bias, meaning that all of our uh, values are relatively in the same place and it's relatively accurate. High variance and low bias over here, high variance is meaning that all these points are really spread out and the low bias means like they're not, they're not centered. Um, they're not close to the actual uh, red dot that we want so much to have like a high accuracy. Similarly, we have low variance, high bias. High bias is where all of our, all of our points are relatively close to each other and the variance is that all of our points are very far away from the red bullseye. And then high variance, high bias, meaning that all of our points are spread out uh, from each other and they're just very far away from the red bullseye. Now why do I even need to know variance and bias? Well this is because these all add up to the error. So we have the error from the large variance we have the error from the significant bias, and then we have the unknown errors. We don't know where they come from. However, this all adds up to an expected like error value that has all of our uh, uncertainty that's involved with this particular model. This is a great visual on how to 
identify the trade-off between bias and variance. And so if we have more variance, we're going to have lower bias and vice versa. But there is a sweet spot in that right down the middle in terms of the minimization of the error, there is going to be a point in terms of when we would want more variance or more bias and vice versa. And so if we just have a ton of bias and a ton of variance, our overall error will be extremely high and all our, our overall model complexity will be high as well. So we want to minimize the model complexity and the error um, overall. So essentially, this is why we want to regularize. We keep all of our variables, but we set their coefficients to zero. So we have the entire model structure. We just have coefficients that are close to zero or zero. That essentially makes those specific features moot. We also decrease the model complexity while keeping all of the variables inside of the model. Now let's tie this all together with the loss function. It's essentially, well, the ridge regression loss function essentially minimizes the sum of square re residuals similar to that of the linear regression, but it has the parameter estimate shrinkage value associated to it as well. So over here, uh, in our equation, the linear uh, model of the ridge regression is essentially the same thing that we have for our ordinary least squares. It's our sum of squares um, error, but we have this uh, specific regularization constraint, and this is our lambda function, or you can call it the Lagrange multiplier. It is called the Lagrange multiplier, uh, but that is also a tuning parameter that we can play around with. And this is what's going to add a constraint to our overall model. Uh, we also have the beta squares and we just sum all of the true values together. And we can set some limitation for our uh, C value, which is our essentially our constraint or our controlling parameter. Uh, it's going to be greater than zero and we want to essentially minimize this entire value with this specific constraint over here. Note that when we equate lambda to equal zero, we essentially get the same equation of the linear regression model. So in this video, I briefly went over pretty much all you really need to know for the back end of the ridge regression. In the next video, we can go over a more in-depth applied analysis to using ridge regression on, specific, on a specific data set. So I will see you in the next video.